E3, short for Electronic Entertainment Expo, started in 1995 and was by far definitively the place for first and third party game studios to announce their new projects and games. However, I'm going to break some hearts here with a very valid yet very spicy take. E3 has been non-relevant to the gaming community and industry for over a decade. The last three years have been proof stirring our pudding. Pudding. The proof is in the pudding. Something like that. The past three years have been stirring the proof pudding for us. As E3 was completely canceled in 2020, a digital only event last year in 2021, and and this year, 2022, it's been completely canceled and there's very minimal tears being shed. I'm going to talk about what an amazing experience E3 was for the last two decades and how irrelevant it's been for about eight years. Let's get it. I want to start off by giving E3 a ton of praise because it was definitively the physical event, the culmination of the video game community, where thousands of developers, producers, and gamers came together to announce new projects, new hardware and software, new consoles, and new games. You remember when The Rock and Bill Gates stood on stage in 2001 at CES and announced the original Xbox? Only running on one-fifth of his power? Well, I, I would think that... It doesn't matter what you think, Bill. All the details for that announcement followed in the event at E3, giving up the pricing and release date of the Xbox. However, with home internet becoming more common, online entertainers such as YouTubers and live streamers coming into fruition, companies such as Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, as well as third-party developers such as Konami, deciding to showcase their own products on their own YouTube channels or at their own live-hosted events, rather than at E3, and finally, the gaming community finding out about gaming news, leaks, prior to the E3 event has made it completely irrelevant. Let me break this down. E3 started in 1995. A lot of homes didn't even have internet, and if they did, it was slow as hell. You had to choose between taking phone calls on your landline or dialing up to the internet, which took about two minutes. There was hardly any gaming news platforms besides Game Informer magazine. YouTube didn't even start till 2005, and live streaming, that sure as hell wasn't a thing for about a decade after that. And even third-party game developers decided to showcase their products at E3 to give you a little teaser trailer with some CGI. But now that fast home internet's become more common and almost the standard of the norm nowadays, this has made YouTubing and live streaming a lot more common. Thus, a lot of outlets that share the gaming news, such as Rich at Review Tech, Young Yeah, and AK40 Kevin at Gamer Heaven. So 99% of the news that we would be getting at E3, you've already known about for the last six months. Just like Victoria's got no secrets left, E3's got nothing left up its sleeve, because we've already cuffed in him, those suckers. It makes getting the gaming news at E3 completely irrelevant. Not to mention Nintendo, Team Red actually trailblazed the way by stopping doing their main event at E3 in 2011 and hosting their own Nintendo Direct. PlayStation and Xbox followed shortly after, where now, Sony announces the majority of their major titles and new hardware, such as PSVR, at their own PlayStation Direct. And they might drop a couple of morsels, crumbs of goodies over there at E3, if they show up at all. Next up, from the standpoint of all these companies, it is actually cheaper and more lucrative for their bottom end just to host an announcement on their YouTube channel where the production cost is minimal, all they need is some good lighting, a camera, a good mic setup, and somebody energetic on camera that can relay them message of what the game's about, as opposed to having some freakishly expensive physical presentation at E3 with maybe some fireworks and smoke going off. People don't care about that. They just want the nitty gritty, squeeze a titty, bottom line up front, what's coming out that we can purchase that we might be interested in. So a lot of these first party developers, such as Sony Interactive Entertainment, Nintendo, and Xbox Studios, started announcing the majority of their games via their own direct public address and their own in-house events, because they do not have to share the spotlight with all these other companies. Maybe there was a huge announcement for a new Gears of War game from Team Green, but then Sony follows up with an even bigger announcement, and now nobody's talking about that Gears of War game. That doesn't have to happen when these companies space out their events weeks or months apart, because the gaming community can disseminate this information out through YouTubers, live streamers, online content creators, influencers, to their audiences, so they can digest that information before moving on to the next tidbit of news. As where E3 stretches out your gullet and slams it down the neck hole, it's too much too fast, because it's one conference broken up across a few days like a weekend too soon too much news too fast slow down. Now, in E3's credit, it has been steadily growing, and in 2018, it was the largest E3 event since 2005, with 69,200 people in attendance. However, in 2019, those numbers dropped down a skosh as Sony pulled their presentation out of the running. E3 2020 was completely canceled, and guess what? All that information was still disseminated to people that were interested in it through YouTube, through live streams. Not to mention, a lot of gamers would actually prefer to get their news through watching their favorite live streamer or YouTuber, because not only are they 
watching a live event such as PlayStation Direct or maybe E3's online presentation, but they're also getting the commentary and the thoughts of the content creator that they resonate with who they have similar likes, dislikes, and views when it comes to games. So you're getting the live presentation plus interacting with the gaming community in chat in real time and getting the unlocked thoughts of your favorite online entertainer. So why pay hundreds of dollars and a flight out to the physical E3 location when you can sit in the comfort of your home in your underwear with a beer cracked and a rack of ribs drizzling down your chest makes more sense to me. I'd rather do that. I mean, I'll be on the other end of the camera, so I can't be having any rib giblet dripping down. I appreciate what E3 has done for the gaming community and industry by bringing them together in one awesome expose and one massive conference, but your services are no longer needed. Thank you for your service. Please take this medallion of honor and retire. We don't really need you anymore. It's like legacy news when we have all these new, faster ways of getting information, thanks to the internet. It's like the landline of the gaming world. You have a cell phone. It's like the cable television of online entertainment. We got streaming platforms now. Shoot, a lot of you guys pirate that stuff for free. I see you with your, your Amazon Fire Stick with Cody on there. It's cheaper and faster for these companies to get news to us. It's more entertaining for us on the receiving end. It's easier for us to digest multiple pieces of information when they're spaced out, not at one conference. Not to mention, thanks to these awesome, incredibly accurate leaks we've been having over the last eight years or so in the video gaming community, we know about everything they're going to announce at E3 months before they even come out of the closet. It's like, oh, cool, dude. We already knew. Like, you're not telling us anything new here. So again, E3 2022 has been officially canceled in all capacities. So no digital event like they did in uh, 2021. So no live streaming, no uploaded video, nothing. But they are planning on coming back twice as strong, full force, full regalia in 2023. That is the official statement is that they want to charge hard in 2023 and bring E3 back. I'm sure E3 will be a thing in 2023, but I do predict predict that over the next five to 10 years, it will become less and less relevant until it simply ceases to exist. Thank you for watching. This has been Gamer Heaven. I'm your host, AK40 Kevin. See you tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace